Hi, I'm Dami from eLearning Channel Museum. In this video, we're going to learn a lover's concerto, which you just have heard it. With this song, we're going to learn two new things. First, chromatic scales, and second, how to use fingerings on the song. So now let's start the lesson. First, if you look at the score, you will find the first page and the second pages are literally the same. The right hand melody is exactly the same. Left hand chords is the same too. But the pattern of the left hand changed. So we're going to work on the melody line first. Let's see right hand first. It starts on G and it has a pattern. Half note and eighth note. So the same rhythms are used over and over again. So if I will just go over the first phrase, which is first line and second line. One, two, three, go. One, two, three. But you have to play with finger number one instead of three. You have to watch out. If you start with the three, there's no finger to go up. So you have to start with the one. That's why I wrote the finger numbers on the score. So you have to be careful with it. Now I will go from the F again. Three, four. So literally stepping up all the way to C, two, and then go back to. Down C. One, two. One, two. And step up. One, two. Step up again. Now here. After coming down to F, E, D, C, we have to go one more down to B. And we don't have finger to go down. Some people go like this. But it's not a good idea. Because if you play like this, then it will break the melody line. So best way is 4, 3, 2, 1, cross it over. So this is the finger number that you have to watch out. So going back and forth. Okay? So we will go from the F stepping down eighth note, the same place, and start with the F. One, Two, three, go. F, E, one, two. One, two. Now here, G, but you have to watch out. You have to go with finger number four. Most of the time, people play at five, then you don't have, again, finger to go up. Then you play like this. That's not right. So, go with finger number four, going up and down, up to here. So the note is really easy, only the confusing part is the fingerings actually. There is rule for the fingerings too. So we have to save the fingerings as much as we can. If we have to go up, then we have to divide. Instead of using the same finger over and over again, like stepping down or stepping up like this, you have to use even. So sometimes you have to save the finger to go up or to go down, or sometimes you have to cross it over too. So try to follow the fingering as I wrote it on the music and practice a couple of times. Then if you can play it well on right hand melody lines, then edit left hand. Now this time we're going to learn left hand. First two lines only, which is first pattern. In this pattern, basically, I used basic chords. So if it's a C chord, not only C chord, but like a waltz pattern or breaking bottom and top. And if you're looking at the second measure, the same C chord. But do you see the slash? 
E means C chord, but bottom is E. So do you remember the inversions that we have learned? Yes, inversion means to changing positions. So you play an E and C later. And what about the next chord? F. F, basic chords. Yes, root is on the bottom. And what about the next one? Again, C, E, which is a C chord, but E is bottom. Then like this. So you go bottom and top two. And what about G7? G7, you have two options. Do you remember? Yes. D, F, G, or B, F, G. In this case, first note is D and G. So maybe without F. D and G. And the next note is B. So that's how you play. C again in root position. So C, E, G. And the next chord is G seventh, which is D and F, G, that pattern. And going back to C, but not the whole entire chord, but we'll just play it E and G only. And then the very last chord of this phrase is G seventh, which is B and F G this time. So for the first phrase, if you're looking at C chord, C but with an inversion, F chord, C with E bottom, and G seventh. So D, G, and B. And C again, G seventh with the D on it, and C chord, but only top two, and G seventh again with B. Yes, this is the left hand literally. So it seems pretty easy, right? But when we put both hands together, it will be a little bit confusing. Let's try it only the two lines, which is first phrase. Now, put both hands together on the key. Ready? One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. And then right hand G, wait until you change hand position to next chord inversion. The next one. Now, here is confusing part. Your left hand is holding G and C, and your right hand has to play it to C, the same note. How are we gonna do it? Yes, lift your left hand so the right hand can, can play it. Since we are sharing the keys, sometimes we have to lift as fast as possible. In the music, it says the three count. We have to hold it for three. We can't let it go. Yes, we can. That's fine. So just let it go and then play with your right hand. Sometimes music, they write it that way. They wrote whole note, but we have to leave because of the me if melody line comes in, we have to yield it. Yeah, so it should be fine. Don't worry about it. And then, what about if you move it on to the third measure? What is your right hand? A. Right? And left hand is F chord. So, one, two, and what about right hand? Do you remember? Like, squeeze in. So, this is finger number that you have to watch out. Three is easier, but if we play a three, then there's no finger to go up. That's why we're going to use finger number one, two, three, four. And then, left hand is going down to C chord, but bottom note is on the E. One, two, and again, the same. Three, 
before. So you have to shift as fast as possible. Okay? Sometimes your mind is too hurry and you don't play it. So you have to watch out. You have to play and lead. Or sometimes if you are lifting too late and then right hand down, then we cannot hear the sound. You have to be careful. Also, that's another easy mistake. Okay. Moving on to the second line. Left hand is D and G, which is this seventh chord. And right hand is on F. So, one, two, three, four. And then C chord. One, two. it over so to cross it over just do you see my hand just shifting your wrist a little bit not like this you don't have to move whole your entire arm or if you try to move your fingers only then it's gonna hurt so the best way is from finger number one to move your wrist slightly right side or a little bit toward to that way you see it and then again you have to come down soon so don't go like this just you know keep stay the same angle so that your finger number one can play the next note again which is the same C again so I will go from G seventh chord on the third measure one Do you see? So there is a couple of things that you have to remember. Fingerings. Cross it over. And then finger number four to G. It's kind of hard to play it because this is an awkward distance to put. So maybe this kind of key distance you have to work on. This is the one that we need to master with the songs. Now, this time, if you're looking at the third line, which is the second part of the song, it's pretty much the same. The right hand melody is the same, left hand chord is the same, only the difference is instead of just holding the left hand chords, you play it one more time. One more time. One more. So just repeat it. Of course, there is a little bit change at the ending, but almost the same. So now let's go. To the second part, find hand position again. One, two, three, play. One, two, three, four. And then C chord, but change to E. One, two, three, four. Here, same. And then right hand A, left hand come to F chord. So that's the only difference from the first phrase. And preparing for the next G7 chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, here. Yes, melody line is changing too. Instead of going down, yes, just come back to D again. And here is another fingering part that you have to remember. On D and right hand, it's a stepping up, but you have to play with four instead of three. Why? Because we have to go down. Of course, you can play like this, but in here, it's easier to go with four and end up with this on finger number two. So that way, the next note the chromatic scale, we can start with one. Let's go from measure 14th.
Copper, chromatic scales. Yes, we have never heard that before, right? Chromatic scale means consist of half step. Do you know what is half step? Yes, we have learned it last week. Half step is the closest key. Yes, the basic fingering for the half step is white key and black key. You're going to play one, three, one, three. That's the easiest. And then white key to black key, you use one, two, three. So whenever you see white key and black key, that part, you use one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But the last of black key and white key, you use one, three, one, three. So remember that way. One, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, because this is white key. That's the chromatic scales. So practice this one at home. Of course, I will abroad the techniques too. So you need to practice every day to play chromatic scales. Now let's move back to the song. If you're looking at the very last measure of the very last line, yeah, start with B, C, and C sharp. Last week we learned this sharp, right? So sharp means you go right side. So that one, yes. And D. So it's going to be that one. You play with one and D sharp. It's going to be that. Right? Because the sharp is going right. But you have to play with the finger number three. And then E. And next one is F. F sharp again. And then the next one is G. Yes. But instead of playing one, we just end up with four. If we have to keep on going, then definitely you have to play with one to go up. But we don't go up anymore. But instead, we are going down. So just add with finger number four. So if I play it only that measure again, it will be like this. You see? I will go over details of chromatic scales on the technique lesson. So you can watch that one later, and we'll just start playing the song in here. So left hand is F and G, and right hand plays chromatic scales. That's the first part. And now if we move it onto the second page, we play the song once again, but in different pattern. This time, instead of playing the repetition chords, we break it up. So up and down and up. Basically, breaking off from bottom to top and go back and up. So same pattern. So going up and down and up. Okay, now let's start the second page. G, start with finger number four. Now left hand is the C chord. One, two, three, go. And then the left hand again is the C chord. One, two, and then let it go. So that your right hand can play it. Same time, but the different pattern. 
hands. Right hand is a stepping off. Left hand is a skip. So one, two, three, four. Remember which note to play it. Left hand is chord. The right hand is just stepping off. So remember that way. So play it one note at a time. One, two, three, and then skip four. And here, left hand goes to B and right hand on D. One, and two, and three, four. And now the next line is literally the same as the previous phrase that we have played. Now let's see. One, two, three, and four. And, and then move it to E. Three, and lift. One, two. So for this week, you have to remember two things. Chromatic scales and the fingerings for the left hand and right hand. There is shifting over and right hand. A from the F, skip down, but you have to squeeze your hands like this to go up the next note. So there is part that you have to watch out for the fingerings. So that's all for this week. I guess it's gonna take around three days to get kind of feelings. So don't worry about it if you have trouble playing it. Just work on the first part and edit the second part and edit the third one. By the time when you can add the third line, the fourth part will come right away. So I hope you enjoyed the song. We'll see you next week. Bye.